Christine and Tim, Tim and Christine. You couldn't say one's name without saying the other. Together for almost 20 years, they were seen as the couple to be like, loving and supportive. Everything that I saw with Tim and Chris was, uh, I mean, there's, there's many people that would love to have a, a relationship that they had. It's as simple as that. I mean, there's nothing more than uh, respect for each other, which I could see. I mean, you don't cover that up. To how they were known as Tim and Christine, spoke to what everyone had experienced as genuine adoration. Nobody had ever seen that adoring quality in any way but precious and, and healthy. They were members for, God, over 15 years, I think almost 20. I mean, they were here separately, but then as, as a couple, and they, what brought them together, I think what pe many people are proud of ev even, is was the music program. The choir is its own community or family, and so the fact that they fell in love here too, uh, sort of the choir takes special, um, special participation in that. You know, some of our own fell in love here, and so they felt very close, not just to Tim and Christine, but to the marriage of Tim and Christine. But then on December 1st, around 2 a.m., 911 received a call from a male stating that he had killed his wife and was in the devil's bathtub area of Menden Ponds Park. When officers arrived, they found a man curled up on his knees and forearms in the parking lot. A cell phone on the ground was open in front of him. He said he was Tim Wells. In this case, um, I believe the evidence will show at trial that um, he acted intentionally um, with perhaps premeditation and committed a brutal and unprovoked act. He was advised of his Miranda warnings um, and he waived them and chose to speak to the investigators. The time that we are, um, that we believe she was murdered, approximately 10 a.m. on November 30th of 2009 is from his statements and um, admissions that he made to members of the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. You know, there's certainly a lot of questions here, which is one of the reasons that we have started, although not completed, our own investigation. From the reports that I read, I don't think that they found anything significant. They basically went in, looked around, took the computers, and left. So I don't think there really was anything to see. Which, frankly, is pretty unusual if it is, as they are alleging, a strangling. Because that's usually, first of all, I think if you talk to a medical examiner or anybody of that nature, they're going to tell you that it takes quite a while. And usually it's a pretty violent struggle. Um, so you would expect to see maybe a vase knocked off the counter and broken or chairs tipped over or you, know, you, you would expect to see something and, and to my knowledge there wasn't anything. Um, as, as I see it, again I haven't seen the full autopsy report so there may be something in that that I'm unaware of at this point but other than that the only evidence they have against my client is his statement. It was a Wednesday paper and I had it with me, I hadn't had a chance to read it. So I had it on the counter, and one of the women, we were talking about something, and one of the women said, what about that professor that killed his wife? And I said, oh, I didn't, they said it's right on the front page of the paper. I opened up the paper. It was Christine's, Christine's picture. picture was there. I mean, it she, just, it she, floored me. I'm mad because they, he took my she, friend away. There was, I can't conceive why would he would do this. So if they had disagreement, walk away. You know, walk away. Uh, get a divorce. Don't, don't do what he did. There's no reason for that. I mean, that's why all this is so unbelievable that this has happened. Because, yes, you would look at them as a loving couple, caring for each other. The man had to have just, as far as I'm concerned, just, uh, just all, uh, just cracked at that point. We knew people would need a space. We set up a vigil right away. We also knew people would need a lot of nonverbal ways to honor and celebrate and connect with Christine. So. Um, at the vigil, there was a lot of silence, silence, but a lot of tables where people were able to bring artwork. People had a lot of ways to reconnect with her. Um, and also her commitment with nature. 
And then we were able to share a lot of that with the family. Uh, that was very healing for them, you know, because each one of those was a symbol of how, not just a symbol and a reminder of Christine, but how Christine had touched all these different people. I've handled a lot of high profile cases, you know, Henry Cox, Jaquan Clark, you know, cases that have been in the media. But I have never had an outpouring of support for a client like I have had for Tim. I've had colleagues, neighbors, friends, people from church, you know, calling me on a regular basis, asking if there's anything they can do, any way they can help, you know, even as primary care physician. The core of our spiritual tradition is this idea of disconnection. What we're here to do is heal spiritual disconnection. So that's why this thing of we're called to stay connected to him, to leave him isolated would be to participate in a further act of uh, evil, uh, something that, that harms life rather than heals it. And in that sense, people, they're trying to sort of he heal maybe some of this sin and evil by, by staying in connection with Tim. And from our religious tradition, that's sort of an, that's enough. Tim was um, really very, very even temperament. Maybe, uh, and sometimes I would wonder, uh, you know, what, what if, if he if he did like something or if he if he um, enjoyed what he was doing because he really never showed uh, the extremes of emotion that Christine did. I mean, I just can't have bitterness for him in my heart. I can't go around feeling that bitterness uh, or. I feel sadness more than that. I look at Tim and I look at what, you know, what he's going through. I mean, he said he didn't mean it and all these things that, you know, right now are coming out. Um, uh, she's gone. I mean, that's all I know. She's not here anymore. He is. I, I don't know what, whatever possessed him. But uh, it's hard. It's hard because you, you had a feeling for both of them. But the feeling... The thing is, Christine's not here anymore. Tim is. Everything we believed about couples being able to fall in love at first sight. Um, we want to believe that's possible, you know? And Tim and Christine were, were a couple that made us sort of believe in that. And we don't want to let this go. Not just for Tim and Christine's sake, but for, you know, for our sake, you know what I mean? People are feeling for my, for selfishly almost. I want to believe that's possible. I want to believe that that deep connection happens in life, and that it's somehow real, and and that it that it's so real and powerful that something like this could never happen.